Hallelujah. Chris, you're going to read us the psalmist for today. And it is, go ahead. Uh, from uh, King James Version, Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Hallelujah. Psalm 91, that's all. Comforting Psalms right there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And hey, we thank the Lord for an opportunity again to share the message for what the Lord is saying, not only for me, but for those that are watching, for those that are here. We thank the Lord for speaking to us because through his word we are established and we're grounded and we're set up. Being doers of the words. But I'm beginning to thank the Lord for the message today. I ask God what direction and what purpose. And I had a busy week this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I usually get the message together on Friday night, but I was kind of busy. But last night, I sat, pondered about two hours, and labored in the spirit, and the Lord began to speak to me about this message. The title of the message is Count the Cost. When we start living on a day-to-day -day basis, when it comes to a daily relationship, with the Lord, we must always be mindful that we have to stay in covenant agreement. And with everything that's feeding in the media today, everything that's going in our ears, everything that we may see happening, we have to be able to discern whether it's good or evil. Discern if it's something that would keep me in alignment with deception, bring me to a place of acknowledging that's not good, that's not right. It causes me to pray more. But when I start to count the cost of what I see, what I hear, what I experience, even when I talk to people in general, just being at a birthday party yesterday and people coming in from other states and having conversation with people in general, it lets me count the cost of God, thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the knowledge that you've given me. As the scripture says in Habakkuk 2 and 14, as sure as I live, says the Lord, the, the knowledge of the glory of God is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. He's given us the knowledge to operate and to act according to the will of the Father. And we have to stay in alignment with the will of the Father. We have to count the cost every day. And when we look at checks and balances, if you've never been taught, if you've never taught your children, and your children have never been taught checks and balances, then they don't know how to know that your check going into the bank or you put your check into the bank after you put it in, the amount of money there, the bills is coming out, all your expenditures coming out. You have to keep a balance on that to make sure you don't overspend. Well, in God, we have to keep a balance on doing the word, knowing the word, acknowledging the word, Operating according to his will is his word. You want to know what his will is? You get right in the book. It's in the book. So when the Lord began to speak that to me, I began to think about the wicked one in very deceptive ways that he's deceiving the very elected in these days. Talking to people, I get the reality that they believe the way they believe. And we can always agree to disagree. But in the fact of the matter, people are getting twisted with their understanding because they not know what the truth is. So when I say count the cost, the word count means to consider. You have to consider what's going on in your life related to your circle, related to your influence, related to the things you involve yourself in. And you have to make sure you're in alignment with what the word says if you want to operate in the spirit realm of covenant agreement with God. The word count means to consider or to record as an opinion or persuasion. So Paul said, I'm persuaded. You have to be persuaded of who you are and walk accordingly. And that means you have to be counting the cost every day. What is it costing you to believe what you believe? What does it cost you to stand in agreement with somebody that's not in alignment with the word? What does it cost you? You know, sin is a reproach to any people. And the scripture teaches us that sin does not only affect you, it is a domino effect to anybody in your circle. If somebody 
your friend or your associate or your company accompanying you on a day-to-day -day basis, they are the one that gets affected by the sin that you exhibit or that you don't really know about or you don't really understand. So when we think about considering or recording the uh, persuasion of our daily activity, we have to count the cost and continue to move forward. It also means, count means to include or exclude. By or as if by. So if I know what the words say, I can exclude what you just said because that ain't right. But now it's my responsibility to not only do the count the cost, but it's to do a check and a balance. Did you know? Of course, you don't understand or you never heard of this particular subject or this particular matter. Do your research to be able to bring someone to an understanding of acknowledgement of what they're saying that might not be on alignment with what God is doing in the earth right now. The scripture even, this, this word here, count, also means to rely or to depend on someone or something to have value or significance. And I'll say that again and I'll move right along. I'm just trying to give you, when God gives me a message, I look up the definitions because he gives me those titles, count the cost. And I'm thinking, okay, God, where do you want to go with count the cost? When I look up the word count, look up the word cost, to work because I'm a, a word person. That one word may reiterate in my heart for a moment, and I can go back to that one word. So when I say count, it means to rely or depend on someone or something, the word of God, to have value or significance. What's this signifying where you are, what you're doing today? It should be the Word of God if you say you're a Christian. You should be abiding according to the Word of God. So the word cost just means a loss or a penalty incurred. A loss or a penalty incurred. Something's going to be penalizing you with life in life today. If you walk outside and you don't have on no shoes and you need to run out there right quick, it could be a cost to that because you could step on something Touch your toe. That's just life in general. But think about it as we move forward according to the scripture. Think about where we are if we count the cost daily. And checks and balances. Checks and balances. To check just means to expect or to examine. You know, over in Corinthians, they said, let a man examine himself, whether he be in the faith or not. You have to examine on a day-to-day -day basis, where are you? What's your ideology? What's your thoughts on that? Somebody says something in Walmart, and you heard it, and you said, hmm, you examine that. You do a check on what they just said. Now you try to make, this is me, make a appearance to them to where I can input according to what they said to where I can bring some wisdom or some knowledge or some understanding to that because they could be struggling in that very area because of they not examining what they believe according to a check and a balance. Check just means to expect and examine or to look appraisingly or appreciatively. So when I'm looking to check something on somebody, I'm looking to of bring some direction and guidance because I appreciate them being a human. They just they may have some insight that that's maybe holding them back or lulling them in life that you want to give them the truth. So I began to look at this and thank the Lord about what He was saying because everything has repercussions. Even Romans six and twenty three says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I don't want the wages of anything falling on me because I didn't count the cost. And I didn't allow the checks and balances to examine or inspect where I was and how I looked at the situation accordingly. So the scripture that I have today here, the first one I have is Psalms 42. This is the psalm of David. And David had a zeal to serve God. And that's what we all have to have. According to the will of the Father, we, we can have a zeal, but we have to have a zeal according to the knowledge. We have to know. A zeal just means an excitement or, or, or a hunger or a desire to do something. I got a zeal, but I don't understand how to do it. So the scripture teaches us that we need to have a zeal according to the knowledge. 
But here's what David said in Psalms 42. Well, stay with me here. The Bible says in Psalms 42, 1 through 11. We're going to do the whole chapter here, but we're just going to move right along here. As a heart, a deer, panicked after the water broke, so panicked my soul after thee, O oh God. And we're going to talk a lot about the soul realm today. The soul realm, the heart, they're closely interrelated when we talk about the heart and the soul. But we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind in reference to what the soul realm does. The soul is your mind, will, your emotions, your intellect, and I'll give you a definition on it in just a moment. Let me finish this, this passage here. As my heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsted for God. And I like this little part right here. For the living God. There is a lot of godly, little G-O-D, but my soul should be thirsting after God, the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Now you've heard probably people say that in reference to conversation. Where's God in all this? Where's God with this going on? Well, here's the reality. God's given mankind dominion. Dominion meaning you have a power to work against the works of darkness. The Bible says over in 3 John that the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. So he's then given us opportunity to destroy all the works of the enemy, but where are you in the midst of the plans of God? Verse 4 says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise. With the multitude, they kept holy day. Verse 5 says, and from 5 on to 11, I want you to hear this in reference to how I take, took this in my notes. From 5 to 11, I put in here, it's where David starts to encourage his soul to trust in the Lord. You have to speak to yourself sometimes and shake yourself. Apostle Paul was talking to King Agrippa, and King Agrippa said, they, Thou almost persuaded me to be a Christian. He almost persuaded him, but the persuasion has to be in your own heart to move forward, to count the cost, to do checks and balances every day to make yourself know that you're in alignment with the will of God. Verse 5 says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Now he's talking to himself now. And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Now here's what I got and grasped in this as I was studying it last night. In verse 5, he said to his soul, Why, soul, are you disquieted within me? And then, of course, I began to look up words here, and I'll give you some definitions here in a minute. But he was saying, Why are you disquieted in me? I'm going to hope in God, for yet shall I praise him. And then the, that rest of that said, for the help of his countenance. you got to realize that help is on the way when you call out to him. You cry out to God, he's ready and willing and able to help you in the midst of whatever you're going through. I think it's Hebrews chapter uh, 4 and verse 12 that says that we can... Uh, call on God and come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in the time of need. We can do that. So the scripture teaches us that. So he said for him, for the help of his countenance. And then he said, oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill Mazar. Now, all he's doing is going back in his understanding when God helped you before. If God's helped you before, you can always go back and reiterate how God helped you through one calamity, and then he's helped you through another affliction, and he's helped you, and he's continued to help you. But he said, I cry out, I yet shall praise him for the help of his countenance. And verse 7 says this, Deep calling unto deep at the noise of thy water spout. And all waves and thy billows are gone over me. Deep call to deep. How deep are you? 
in your will, your word, your connection, your relationship. We're not talking about religion here. We're not talking about I go to church every Wednesday. I go to church every midweek service. I go to church every Sunday. We're not talking about how you attend a service. We're talking about calling out to God from a deep, internal being of who you are. Verse 8 said, Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life, I will say unto God my rock, who has thou forgotten? What, excuse me, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Now, mind you, David is communicating to God. He has a zeal to serve God and want to serve God, but the verses 5 through 11, David is talking to God and he's reiterating that he trusts in him. He's encouraging his soul to trust in him. He has to talk to himself. You ever talk to yourself? If you talk to yourself and you listen to yourself, make sure you're listening to the word of God that's prominent in your heart because you've been spending time with God. If you ain't spending no time with God, that's a whole new lesson, a whole new teaching, a whole new ministry. But you need to spend time with the Lord to where you can call it upon him, deep call it upon deep. And the last two verses says in Psalms 42, as with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? He said that again. And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Now I want you to look at emphasis on this. This last verse, he changed it from, we back up here to verse 9, I think it was, uh, maybe in verse verse 5, he said, Why am thou cast down when he was talking to his soul? And why am thou disquieted in me, knowing that he was having a problem with his soul realm? And let me give you a definition now. When we think about the soul realm, the soul realm is the, in the Hebrew of that particular verse there is the word nephis. Nephis. And it means uh, the pleasure or the mind or the life itself or the appetite. In other words, the appetite is what's causing you to think the way you think. What's feeding your ideologies? That's the appetite. What's causing you to be fed and think like you think. So the soul realm is your mind, your desire, your emotions, your passion. Whatever you're passionate about, it's in your soul realm. And that's why you have to be saved in the soul realm daily. You've been saved spiritually, you've been saved in the soul realm daily. And it's important that we understand that. The soul realm is actually the inner being of man. Your passion, your desires, your pleasure, everything that from the external sense, extent that's, that's influencing you on the outside can influence your soul realm and cause you to either move toward it or move away from it because you understand you got a check in the balance and you count the cost and that's not going to serve me. That's not going to give me no encouragement. So you have to realize that the soul realm is the activity of the mind, the activity of the will, and the activity of the character of a person. So it's important to understand that. So when we look at that word soul, the psalmist knew that his soul was struggling. His will, his emotion, his passion, and his, his desire, his appetite, because other things were feeding it externally. And when we look at this and go down, it comes from another word, which means uh, appetite, renewal, or revival. It comes from a, a base word, shehi, means in, it's living. We talk about the living God when he said, I seek a God, a living God. A living God is just alive, and the scripture speaks of the word living as a Hebrew word called shehi. And it comes from a word which means a living, a living thing. It's feminine and singular and masculine, plural. That's, that's big right there. Because 
when we look at God, He is our everything. And we have to keep our mind focused on what may get us off of track with being in alignment with what God's purpose and God's will is. A living God leading you and guiding you. A living God speaking to you, directing you. A living God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The words on the page are not lying. But Jesus, he's alive. He's a living God. He's the one that works in you and through you to cause you to move according to his will. And when the psalmist said in verse 5, why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? The word disquieted means making a noise. There's always noise externally out in the world, on your social media, in the news media. CNN, Constantinating News, or any of those things is constantly feeding you and causing you to be, be disquieted. Disquieted. Disquieted just means clamor, noise, or uproar. David had all that going on in him that was coming against him. He was asking his soul, why are you cast down? Why are you allowing this noise and this rage and this clamorous and this uh, uproar coming against me? He knew he was fighting a daily opportunity to win the battle of the soul. And we all have to do that. We have to count the cost every day. It will it take your peace away. Hey, if I got a million dollars tomorrow and I put my whole trust in that million dollars, what's going to happen when that million dollars go? I lost all my trust, lost all my peace because I trusted in something external. I got to trust in something internal, what God is doing in me. Both in verse 5 and 11, the word countless there in verse 5 speaks of help of his countless. So David was calling for God's countless. The word countless there means to face or to appear. He was asking for God to appear in his countless to appear in his life. He's calling on that in verse 5. Then in verse 11, he changed it, and he started encouraging himself so much that he got to a point where he quit questioning his hope in God, and he started saying, yet will I praise him. Yet will I praise him. Why? Because he's a help of my countenance. He didn't realize now, I can't do nothing without God. I didn't got to count the cup. Excuse me. I have to count. Let me get me drunk. David had got to a point where he said, I got to count the cost. When I start counting the cost, yet will I praise him. Why? Because I can remember how he helped me through the last thing I went through that was so heavy on me. He helped me through the other thing that I was reacting with with my close circle of influence. He helped me through these things. So he changed it from the help of his countenance to the help of the help of my countenance. Why? Because he began to count the cost, allow the thing that was coming against him to quiet him, clamor, noise, and all the roaring in his life. He ceased it, and he began to praise God, and he convinced himself to count the cost and to walk according to trusting in God. That's what we all got to do every day. Every day. When you go through life, you need to grow through. I said grow through what you go through. And that's a reality check within every one of us. So in David's countenance, the appearing or the face, we call on the name of the Lord. And it means to come into a, a place to where you turn toward or turn to <coughs> or you make clear. You make clear what your decisions are. You make clear what you just counted the cost on. You make clear what you've examined. You make clear what you've expected about what your expectations are from your decisions you're going to make. You make sure of all this. And that's the countless. Not in you, no, not in him. As you uh, submit, you now, the countless is in you. You turn toward the appearance of the Lord and you make clear who he is and what he is. And here's another scripture that gives us an understanding about how we deal with livelihood on a day day basis. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18 says this, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, out, outer things perish, 
Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far exceeding more eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, not by faith, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they're eternal. So I have to start looking to the spiritual realm of faith. There's a scripture definition on faith in Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence not seen. I can't see it, but yet I've not got my hope in me. My hope is in the Lord. I've checked it. I've, I've done an examination. I know right now the checks and balances are in alignment with the will of God. I know I've counted every cost that it would cost me if I don't do this and every cost that it would cost me if I do do this. I got it in alignment with the will of the Father because the things that I don't see are eternal. In God, by faith, I see you moving and operating according to your own will and your own purpose. Look at the word outward. I would there just mean it's, it's a primary preposition denoting an origin or a point where an action or a motion proceeds. So the things outside, I have to know the origin of what's going on in things that I see. Well, so-and-so and so-and-so, I saw him over at Oregon. That man, that woman was cussing each other out. What's the origin of that? Confusion. What's the origin of that? They don't have peace. How can I make it an opportunity to give them Peace of God that surpasses all understanding by me acknowledging it, going over and saying, I couldn't help but to notice you and your lady was arguing. Is there anything I can pray with you about? Do your part. Because if you do that, your soul is not disquieted, the clamor and the noise. You make clear to yourself as you examine the cost of what that would be if they continue because it wouldn't be nice. And you got to be able to understand that on a day-to-day -day basis, walking according to your will, your purpose. If you're the light that's sitting upon a hill that others may see because you glorifying yourself, no, because you're glorifying the Father which is in heaven. So let your light so shine. Count the cost. I don't want to see anybody arguing and fussing and going through stuff that they could get deliberated by knowing and acknowledging the word of God and coming to a truth of who they are is important. The outward man perish, the things on the action or emotion that proceeds from the origin outside of me, he perish. But the inward man is being renewed day by day. How is that? The inner man, the scripture here, the definition for inward means the eternal inner man or the soul, or then it says the conscience. And people say, oh, let your conscience guide you. Well, you don't want your conscience guiding you if you ain't in alignment with what the Word is saying. If you ain't been in the Word, you ain't been meditating, pondering, searching the Scripture, and it's in your heart, then you don't, might not want to follow your conscience. Let me give you another understanding here. When we talk about inward, we say that the outward man is uh, let me let me see. I got there's another scripture. The word renewed in here. I'm gonna say where was that scripture? Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the word renewed. The word renewed here means cause to grow up or to make new. So when we understand about that in reference to who you are, in reference to what your daily endeavors are, you should be being renewed daily. You should be renewed daily. In verse 16, it says the inward man is renewed day by day. Renewed means to grow up. Have you grown up? Have you grown in it? It just means to grow up or to renovate. Renovate. Take out the old, put in some new. The Bible says in first. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. He's renewed day by day as he allows the old things to be, be cast down and the new things to be clear in who he is. In other words, he's growing up. He's changing into a new kind of life as opposed to a former corrupt state 
of what he thought or what he was dealing with and how he related to things. So it's a day-to-day -day endeavor for us all to get to that place that where we always count the cost. We always seeing what is it I need to do to make me in alignment with the will of God to where I can do the word of God to advance the kingdom of God. People say, follow your heart. You ever heard people say, well, just follow your heart. I don't want to know that I'm following my heart if they ain't in alignment with what the word of God is saying. Because what's in the heart? Here's a scripture that the Lord showed me right here in Mark chapter 7, verse 14 through 23. And when they had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. And I like that. Understand. You can listen, but you need to understand. There is nothing from without a man that entered into him would defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile a man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. See, this is real important. He just said in verse 14, that hearken unto me, every one of you. And then he said, understand. And then in verse 16, he said, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And what he said is, you're not just hearing noise. And not just this quiet, clamoring noise that you heard. You're hearing the Spirit say what he's saying to you, what he's directing you. Verse 8, 17 says, And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, for they didn't even understand it themselves. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever things are without entered into a man, it cannot defile him? Talking about what you're eating and putting in your body cannot defile you. We're talking spiritual here. Said, cannot defile him, but verse 19 said, because it entered it not into, excuse me, it entered not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out the drunk person all meat. And verse 20 23 said, and he said, that which cometh out the man, that defiled the man, from for from within, out of his heart of man, proceed. Here's a list. Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetous, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. So if you don't get your heart transformed and renewed and have a clear, we went with that definition we was talking earlier about a clear way having to make clear that was the word uh, countless. Make it clear in your understanding as you count the cost of what's in your heart that where you don't have a heart, that word heart is the word cordia, and it Greek word cordia, and it means the thoughts or the feelings or the mind. So the thoughts, your feelings, and the mind in relation to the definition of soul a while ago, your appetites, your desires, your will, your purpose, those are right in alignment with you doing a checkup from the neck up every day. They right in alignment with you doing a count the cost all the time. Well, you doing a checks and balances on a day to day basis related to your walk with the Lord to where when you pray, you have power and authority that nothing hinders you when you release the word of God and it speaks to that which is spoken to from your prayer request. You as you pray. So you don't want your heart to be in the way that all those things spoke of. So you have to allow the purging continually and check it up. Doing your checks and balances. Counting the cost. Because even the word heart there means of the will and character. Of the soul so far as it is affected and stirred in bad way or a good way. Or it's a seat of your sensibilities, affections, emotions, desires, appetites, and passions. Same as the soul sounds like to me, right? So David knew that his soul and his heart was struggling in some things as he looked at the external things of what people were saying and how they said, where's your God now? And they was talking to him. You've got to know and be assured in who you are 
and know that you've been done your examination, you've been done your expectation ex in who you are and where you are and where your thoughts are, and know that you're doing according to the will of the Father. I don't know about you, but when I was looking at this, I began to think and ponder. I checked myself right then. I examined myself right then to make sure I was counting the cost of where I am now. Have I missed anything? Lord, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss God. Do you? Jeremiah said it like this right here in, in chapter 17 of Jeremiah. Blessed is a man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by waters. Kind of reiterating what the psalmist said in Psalms chapter 1. Eh? Mm -hmm. And he and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. When you keep your mind on the Lord and your hope is in the Lord. And you're doing a checkup from the neck up. And you're doing your... You're counting the cost, and you're examining, and you're knowing where you are in the Lord, and your hope stays straight in the Lord. You be like a tree that's planted by the waters. If you spread out your roots in the river, and you'll see when heat starts to come, you won't even know your heat is there because you're grounded in the Lord. You won't even know that you will you be careful for nothing. You know, Psalms, uh, Philippians chapter 4 says, be careful for nothing. Or be anxious for nothing in some translation. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And that God, the peace that surpasses all understanding, will guard your mind and heart. That's what it's all about. When you're doing a checkup, and you're doing your checks and service, and you're counting the calls every day, because like verse 9, you, I mean like verse 8, the end of verse 8, Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You'll cease not to yield fruit because you're grounded, set and your mind is in alignment with the Word of God. Your soul realm is in alignment with the will of God and the purpose of God is being manifested through you as a man or woman of God. It's important that we do checks and services, that we do checks and balances, that we align ourselves to count the cost on a day-to-day -day basis. Because verse 9 says, the heart is deceitfully, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Transformation. Verse 10 said, I, the Lord, searches the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doing. And I'll tell you, I want the Lord to give me according to his ways directing me and guiding me, leading me. Why? Because I count the costs. Why? Because I checks and balances. I got it in line. Oh God, I forgive me. Repentance is always the answer to getting in alignment with God, back on track, because you've done a check and a balance. You've done a counting the cost, and you realize you may have been off. And here's the last scripture as I begin to close. God is good all the time, and he began to minister this to me and through me. I love the Lord. I love his word, and it just ministers to me. I hope you're getting something out of this, whether you're watching online or whether you're hearing it right here in the house. Here's the last scripture. In Luke chapter 10, we find a couple here, Mary and Martha. you probably heard this before, but this is so important about counting the cost. What's more important to you? Is Christ important to you? Is God important to you? Is doing the will of the Father important to you? This is why this scripture is so important. Now it came to pass, verse 38 through 42 of Luke 10. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him <coughs> into her house. Let me stop right there and just ask you a question. Have you received him into your house? You have to receive him into your house first. I move right along. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Let me say something about that. Are you sitting at his feet, hearing his word? Are you sitting at his feet? I always say this. Not only talk to God, but listen. Coke your ear and see, okay, God, speak to me. And practice listening. Because if you don't practice listening, You'll never hear what the Lord is saying. It'll be like that uproar, that 
that, that noise, that roar going on with the world and the things around you. So Mary sat at his feet and heard his word. Now watch this in verse 40 through 42. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. In other words, I need some help here, Lord. I'm working my bones off. And now Mary's over here at your feet listening to you. She had counted the cost. If he came into your house today, would you try to get the house cleaned up, fix it all up, and tidy all up, or would you go and sit down at his feet? You have to count the cost. You have to do a check to the balance. Oh, God is in my house today. And guess what I want you to know? He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. So he's there whether you know it or not. Verse 41 and 42 says this. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Count the cost, he said. And Mary has chosen that good part. What? Which shall not be taken away from her. I want you to hear that today. It will not be taken away from you when you spend the time of counting the cost. When you spend the time of checks and balances. When you examine yourself. When you know who you are. You're standing strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It will not be taken away from you because you're at the feet of the Father. You're at the feet of the Lord. Listening. Hearing what he said. Count the cost. Do your checks and balances. Every day, allow yourself to be in the presence of the Lord because this is what's going to happen. When you do that, you're not going to be cumbered. When you back up there and look at that word cumbered in verse 40, Martha was cumbered. That word cumbered means to draw away or distracted. She was distracted. Don't let nothing distract you from being in the presence of the Lord and acknowledging that you're there and you're in the right place position, you're in covenant agreement, your soul realm is in alignment with the will, the perfection, the, the very appetite, the very purpose that God has for your life. Make sure you're at that position in your life daily. Because comfort means distracted. To be occupied or to be busy about something else. Don't be busy about something else. People that's not in church today, well, I want to go, but this and but that. And you may have situations and circumstances, don't hear what I'm not saying. But if this happens every week, then what are you doing? You're cumbered. You're distracted. You're not counting the cost. And that's my message today, count the cost. If you're watching somewhere in the worldwide web of this message, I ask you to count the cost. Reach out to me if you need to reach out to me. Here at In His Presence Ministry, we definitely want to be able to help you, pray with you, pray for you, do whatever we need to do to align your mind in a place that you are walking according to His will and His purpose. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, it says, whatsoever will, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for Christ's sake will find it. And the Bible says, for what would a man profit to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what would a man exchange for his soul? What would you exchange for peace and understanding, for quietness, for not being disquieted with clamor and noise? And what would you exchange for that? That's the question you need to ask yourself. The word exchange means that which is given in the place of another thing, a way of exchange. I'll exchange it in this noise going on in my head, in my life, for the peace that surpasses all understanding mm -hmm. by the true and living God we serve. Hallelujah. You look over there in the book of Joshua. I'm going to close this out. In the book of Joshua, when he had talked to the people, Joshua said, according to the law, and the law is written in your heart now on the tablets of flesh, and not of tablets of stone. But in that day, he said, this law shall not depart from out thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou may observe, not only to meditate, but to do according to that which is written therein. And if thou do it, it will make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. 
Mm -hmm. Then he said, have I not commanded you to be strong and of good carriage and be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thy go. Hallelujah. I'm counting on that. I'm banking on that myself, and I want you to bank on it too. This is James Buckley. Thank you. I look forward to praying with you, praying for you. And by the way, let's pray right now in closing. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that if we get anything out of this message today, we'll do a check and a balance on examining our heart. Are we in the will of the Father? We account the cost, Lord, and we'll look to you that you'll clear it and you'll make the message clear and plain of where we are and where we need to be and what your destiny and your purpose is for our life. Everyone under the sound of my voice and everyone that's watching and everyone that will watch, I pray that you gird up the laws of their mind and let them be steadfastly seeking toward the will of advancing the kingdom. Lord, in you, they'll begin to live, move, and have their very being grounded and set according to your word and your perfected purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and believe. And we all say, Amen. Amen. And amen. If you want to give to this ministry, give your time of prayer. I would sure appreciate it. Pray for this ministry. I love you. I appreciate you. If you want to give monetarily, you can always give by cash out, by Dollar sign IHP Ministry, or you can give by PayPal, paypal.me forward slash IHP Ministry. To God be the glory. To see you next time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.